All right, I think everybody's in now. So uh, welcome to the ordinance subcommittee meeting of uh, November 30th, 2021, 7 p.m. Um, I do know, uh, want to note that this uh, meeting is being held remotely, remotely uh, due to a executive order from Governor Baker that is still in effect. Um, and we do have, I uh, believe we have some minutes to approve. So I'm ha let's, let's do that. So let's get some minutes approved. So, uh, oh, is it okay if I introduce those? Mr. Yes, please. So we have, we have minutes from the last, I don't have minutes yet from the last meeting, but we do have minutes from uh, 928, 928 and uh, 1012. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept those. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion in the second. Any further discussion? Okay, no further discussion. So Owen Zarrett. Yes. And Tom Peake. Aye. And I vote yes as well. Minutes are uh, approved and we still have a couple of people entering in here. But in the meantime, let me just say that if, uh, welcome to the meeting, uh, make sure that you are on mute until I call on you. Uh, and uh, if you want to have your video on, that's fine. It does. It's not that distracting to me, really. So um, if anybody here is from the public and would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda, this would be the time to do it. And so if you are here to talk about 7 Groveland Street, um, there will be an opportunity for that. So this is public speak time for anything that's not on the agenda. And if you do uh, have something to say, uh, there's a little bar down on the bottom that says reactions and there's something that says raise your hand and that is going to be how I know to call on you uh, and it allows us to queue you up. Um, so I don't see anybody for public speak. Um, so that brings us into uh, I think the first order of business, which I think everybody is here for, is the proposed um, rezoning of 7 Groveland Street um, and basically what I want to let people know, first of all, is that um, our committee is not in a position to be voting on this one way or another at this point. Uh, and in fact, um, we are uh, planning on going to do a site visit so we can walk the property before we do any full scale deliberations. Uh, however, I will allow this opportunity, since there are so many people here, for people to um, let their thoughts on this be known. Um, I will say this. Uh, if you don't want me to mute you, um, you will speak to the, the issue at hand, which is the rezoning, um, and you won't talk over people or unmute yourself when somebody else is speaking, because um, that's going to be a permanent mute. So um, if you want if you want to do this the proper way, you're going to raise your hand and you're going to speak to the issue and I will call on you. So does anybody have any questions on that? All right. So if you would like to speak on the issue of rezoning 7 Groveland Street, Please go down to your reactions and get yourself in the queue by raising your hand. So if like I, I, I see that, so it uh, looks like Keith is raising his hand, um, but I, I'm going to ask for people to try to raise their hands through the, the reactions so that way I get an order. Um, and so, Keith, I did see you first, and nobody else has raised their hand, so why don't you go ahead and, and start, and then we'll go from there. Uh, can you hear me okay? Sure can. Okay. Um, Jeff, I was wondering if you could put up the um, highway business zoning map for everyone to see. I'm happy to do that, I guess. I would need to have the sharing ability just, to do that. If I just made you co-host. Okay. Can everyone see the parcel map? Yeah, I think I think we all can see it now. Okay, great. And, okay, so I can start with that. Um, as you all know, I'm looking to rezone my 7 Groveland Street residential property to, to highway business. And as all my adjoining parcels, as you can see there, parcel C, parcel D, and parcel A are already zoned highway business and they essentially surround the house. Um, but first, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about my family's experience with the Groveland neighborhood here because I know that's been a concern to some people. Um, you know, my father's new car business next door had been in this neighborhood for, for over 80 years and probably more than most of us have been alive. 
and definitely more than most Groveland people have, have lived there. And we've also been Groveland homeowners for more than 30 years with some of the parcels going back um, up to 50 years for commercial. Um, my dad had numerous changes to move to Northampton, and it was more lucrative for new car sales, more franchises, but he would never desert East Hampton. And you may notice now that there are no new car franchises in East Hampton to pay taxes. My dad was the last one. Um, my father always gave, contributed, and loved the town of East Hampton. This is where he grew up for nearly 98 years of his life in East Hampton. Probably one of its oldest residents. Before he, he, just a little context, before he died, we put the seven Groveland residential property surrounded by these three commercial properties into a trust uh, with the understanding that they would only sell for something that would be the greatest benefit to the neighborhood the east town of East Hampton and my family simultaneously. So all three of those ingredients. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm not a California guy, um, as some people have thought. I grew up in East Hampton. I went to the public schools. I worked at Cernak Buick for years. Um, I was actually, the, I ran the Cernak Blueberry Farm that delivered blueberries to all the different um, stores in town. It's the Log Cabin Restaurant and when I lived there. And I also worked at one time or another on the Groveland properties for over 30 years. So we're not only neighbors of Groveland, we are, we're owners within Groveland. And um, I, so I think it's important to establish that. All in all, I've spent approximately 28 years of my life in East Hampton. So, and that's huge. My father was one of 15 kids in East Hampton. So I am related to many, many families in the town who all love the neighborhoods and the town itself. Uh, and I think that's an important context for us. Um, so we have a lot of history and family in East Hampton. And even though I live in California for medical reasons, um, and I, I would like to clarify this. The town contacted me about 40 R zoning. And I'm interested, uh, and if I'm interested in it, after Courtney, I believe it was Courtney requested it. And that's why I'm here. I did not seek this out in any way. I didn't know about it. I didn't seek it out. I was contacted by the town to say, what do you think, Keith? What's your opinion? The 40R provides for more housing. But the way it's proposed now, it has to be highway business zone first. Um, the highway business zone also allows me to work with lot lines a bit, um, such as the healthcare, medical use, um, that would benefit the neighborhood and East Hampton. Um, it, it would just have me tweak, be able to tweak some of the lines. Um, I, I will say that, um, and this is personal, but I think it's important for the town to understand this. Um, I am selling the properties now, all of them, as I now have a, a life threatening um, heart condition. I've had over 20 heart procedures at Stanford Hospital and I'm on the heart med of last resort. So it's my time to do the best for everyone while I still can. So that's essentially it, some background. Um, so I um, care about the town of East Hampton. My family's always cared about the the town of East Hampton, I'd like to leave a legacy that is for my father and while I still can. So the two questions I have for the council are, if all the houses on Highland and elsewhere surrounded by highway business are, are basically going to refuse 
highway business status and this proposed 40 R overlay, are they, if we set the president that my property is refused? In other words, um, do you have the highway business map, um, Jeff? You can put up. Uh, I do not have it. I need to pull it up. It'll take me a few minutes to get gather that. If you can, because that makes more sense. When you do this. Um, so, Jeff, if you want to stop the share, you could probably like. Um, I think that's that's fine to see if you can pull that up. Okay. Right. So, so basically, if it applies to my property, is it applying to all the other, uh, you know, residential properties that are very, mostly surrounded? by highway business and so that's my first question and if mine's not is that is that uh, the president for other um requests and then the other question i have and, and i'm not sure why is directly across from my house across the street on northampton street is a house on highway business and i don't know who owns it i don't know if it's the courtney house or not but how does that house exist on highway business um, when mine is not, and some of the ones in Highland are not? How did that happen? So, so really, this those are my questions, and um, I just want to do what's best for the town. So, I don't have any agenda. I am not a developer. I am a retired epidemiologist, uh, so I stay home a lot because of. Uh, everything. So I know too much. Uh, retired uh, epidemiologist. I live here in camp, uh, California because I'm next to Stanford Hospital and um, the stuff that they're doing with my heart. So so that's kind of where I'm coming from. And I just want everyone to know that because I know there's a lot of buzz about all kinds of different agendas that are going on in East Hampton. So and whatever the council decides, um, I'm perfectly fine with. Okay. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that perspective. Um, you know, I think I can try to answer at least part of the first question. You know, I, the, the, the separation between this and 40R is 40R being an overlay district would be overlaying the existing highway business. And so, you know, any of those parcels that are on Highland, if they're not already in highway business, unless they were specifically asking to be placed in the highway business, that would, you know, it, it really wouldn't affect them. You know, I think that the difference between that and this is this is a request for a, a parcel that's currently not in highway business to be added to highway business. Um, and as far as like the or origins of the highway business, that goes back way before my time. Um, and why certain properties, I think that's one of the reasons why it's going to be important for this committee and the planner to get out there and, and walk the property and, and take a look at the adjacent properties really closely and do our due diligence um, to make sure that you know, obviously that we're going to make a decision that is in the best interests of the city, of the neighborhood, of the, you know, just all around. That's that's going to be our job. Um, so I, I, I guess I will put that out there again. If anybody wants to make a comment on this, I, I would say that tonight we're probably not going to do much deliberating on this other than allowing for public comment because it really is going to be important for us to do that site visit to gather all of these pieces to put in place before we make this important decision. Um, so if you are interested in making a comment on this, just go down to reactions and, and go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any yet. Maybe in the meantime, do any of the counselors, there you go. Counselor Zarek. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairperson Derby. I, I just have a question. So I don't know if anyone knows the history of this, but just looking, looking at the highway business parcels, um, the the um, I'm looking at GIS map, but the the ones sandwiched between. Oh, uh, thank you. So uh, parcels 43, 44, and 45. Does anyone know the history of those? Because it's just such a weird the the shape, particularly of 45, not necessarily 43 and 44, but also their positioning um, on a residential street in contrast to everything else around them, it just seems odd to me. And I'm curious if anyone here knows the history of that zoning specifically and how that came to be. Yeah, um, yeah. plan of bag. I, I, can, I, well, I, can, I can add some um, perspective. 
those have been in effect way before I owned the property from my father. So, so I'm not sure how those originated. Um, I know that three pieces were commercial. Um, one piece was residential, of course, the Seven Groveland House. Um, but I don't know the history. But as you start looking at, say, the 40R overlay, and if you're requiring highway business, what you're beginning to see is this little area is like singled out. And um, uh, so, so what? if you don't have the 40R, then as it's proposed now, you're denied the opportunity um, to do additional housing there. All right. Okay. On any kind of meaningful. Thanks. Um, I guess I was just going to add that I, I did start to do some of that research. Um, you know, the, the city used to have a zone called the general business zone. And then in, you know, in basic terms in 1995, there was a big rezoning effort. It's it also coincided when the city became a town. And cause I was trying to chase back um, in the, in the map that Mr. Cernak provided, there is a, there is a different zoning district line, um, which I think was the old um, zoning line. And then in 95, there were a lot of tweaks all throughout town and it, and it just got codified as the new highway business. So there's some explanation there. Um, and I'm happy to, can, I'm happy to complete that research and kind of put it into a quick memo to the best I can find. But I think part of the, part of what you're seeing is, is as I would say, it would go back deeper than the zoning, which is, you know, the historical use of the property was, um, the Cernak family kind of with the, with the oil company and the, and the car dealership. So I I'm guessing that some of the zoning got based on what their use was, um, and, and kind of the, the shape of those uses might have had a, a factor in that. And then I think um, the, the other factor that's probably in the, in the equation is Mountain View um, Way, you know, is it looks like a road and it's listed on that map as like a road, but it's not a public way. So it creates a, I think that contributes to that odd, I think it's lot 45. It probably contributes to that being, you know, an odd shaped um i'll do some more research i had Can you asked, build that uh, map up again jeff Can you yeah just... yeah um, because i think that's that's interesting to know because i, I believe it was there was going to be a development there at one point it was going to be a residential development um and so look if you the the other one with the um okay yeah with all of you know all of the parcels and actually shows like what was a pretty extensive planned development that i don't think ever took off so you see the Mountain View Street, and you can see all the parcels on the right side. And it almost looks like you can see the parcels in the 70s up there, too. It almost looks like it was going to. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it probably turns out to be like a paper subdivision that happened sometime, you know, long ago. Um, I think um, what I was just going to, if I could just, um, it, I don't know if that, did that just change to the, to the white map here? Um, no, not yet. But, okay. All right, so it's the screen share. I'm happy to do a little bit. I, I don't think we'll ever find out all the origins exactly of why, but this plan here, you know, in the bottom corner is a stamp from the registry of these. This is a, this is an A and R plan. So these lots got created and I, you know, I had asked uh, Mr. Sternock if he had this original and he said he didn't. So I will, um, I will continue to investigate it. But if what I was looking at this earlier is if you look at the top, there's a R15 and then a line for the general business yep. Yep. and you follow that down and it cuts it cuts through the back of this house lot and down. Um, but in 95, that got adjusted and cleaned up so that it ran with the property line. So one thing, Councilor Zaret, is that it is very common for, it's way it's way cleaner for zoning lines to follow property lines. And I think what happened is historically it ran through the middle and then in 95, they at least aligned it with that property line. So that kind of gives some of its odd, certainly its odd shape. And I think what Mr. Cernak had said before was Mountain View Street does not get, does not qualify as frontage. So in the previous discussion, the idea was that by rezoning this, two lots could be created with frontage on Northampton Street. Mm -hmm. So and that's one of the, I just explained that just for general purposes that on Mountain View Street, it, it doesn't count for frontage. So from the applicant's perspective, he's looking at the amount of foot uh, length he has on Northampton Street and he doesn't, you know, he would need certain dimensions to make two lots. So we kind of covered some of that there in the other meeting. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, thanks for that. Quite honest. Oh, can you put that up for a minute, uh, Jeff, again? I'm sorry. Um, if you look on that uh, parcel map, if you look at the zoning line that cuts behind the house, that's essentially what I was, you know, that would be all I would really need. Um, I do not plan to, big, to build a big development. I don't plan to build something uh, that, uh, you know, is, is where the house is. Um, I'm really looking at that zone um, lane. And then if there is more opportunity for affordable housing or housing, I can work on that. So I would not need all the seven Groveland Street rezoned, just the part, just that little part there where the old zoning line was across it okay interesting which is about I, probably two thousand square feet two three thousand square feet maybe okay so i'm going to open this up to the public now so i see danielle has um her hand up so danielle go ahead um yeah thank you um i just have a few questions for keith i was at the last meeting on november 16th this is a point of order you can ask questions to us but okay. not to one another Right. Thanks, um, Tom. Uh, so yeah, so I was at the last meeting. Um, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit confused because it seems like this was presented as a separate issue um, because of an active offer that was made um, and some other offers that were made that were passed by Wendy's and Starbucks. Um, and 40R wasn't really mentioned in that. Um, but my main concern as somebody who resides next to this neighborhood and who sees this house daily um, is that it's just not an appropriate location for highway business. Um, you know, one of the purposes of highway business is to have a business that is high traffic generating. Um, and I just feel like this street is not an appropriate street for that. Um, I do hear what the owner is saying about how it could be a potential 40R smart growth development. I'm not quite sure if it needs to be highway business to be 40R, that's a question I have. Um, but I, I am wondering um, if, if, it's a, if, if, if it's an appropriate location for highway business because my main concern is that once it's highway business, there's no guarantee what will be in there. It could be anything. It could be anything that's allowed in the zoning ordinance for highway business, which is high traffic generating businesses. Um, and that's pretty scary for the residents on this street. Um, so that's that's my main concern. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And, and I can I can answer the 40R piece of that, which is the 40R overlay that we're looking at, at in that area would be overlaid on the highway business zone, only not residential. So just to make, you know, clarify that point. Does anybody else have anything? All right, Councillor Peak, I see you. I don't want to fall too down too far down this road, but we do have 40R overlays in other places that are not highway business. So like you know, I mean, this is something we'd have to take up in public hearing with the planning board. It would be a whole thing. But like, you know, if we're looking for options that are okay, like I, I don't want to just completely rule out the idea that 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 the forty R could extend potentially to parcels that are abutting but not within the highway business. If we think that smart growth stuff would work on that parcel, but like other types of highway business stuff wouldn't. I, I'm not I, again. I, I don't. We need to check it out. I agree with you. I, I just want to say, like, I, I don't think that there's anything legally preventing us from exploring something like that if it ended up being satisfactory to everybody. But I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. No, I think that's a that's a really good point. It's just up to this point, you know, the overlay that we had discussed was on highway business. So when we get to the planning board, that's something that we can take. Yeah, up. absolutely. Yep. Thanks. For, thanks for that, uh, JP. Uh, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. I can see you now. I still can't hear you, though. You're unmuted, but I can't hear you, so I don't know what's going on. You might want to check your mic. Let's see. How about? Oh, there you go. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I, I I did hear you talk about the planning board and and possible joint hearings. Could you lay out for everyone what a typical process is? Uh, 
I imagine I would imagine that the ordinance committee could say, "Hey, th this isn't worth pursuing," or "It is worth pursuing." If it is, what happens? What are the steps? Who's included? When are the public? Uh, uh, when, when is there public hearings? Public speak? And that would I think would be helpful for everyone. So, um, as far as this item, which we're discussing, which is Seven Groveland rezoning from residential to highway business, that would require us to send this to the planning board to trigger the zoning ordinance change back to us as well when we brought it to the full council. Um, and that would start the timeline for um, the zoning change, which then we'd have to have a joint public hearing with the planning board, um, which you know generally takes uh, you know uh, one or two or more public hearings. Um, and when we come together with a final recommendation, then that would bring it back to the full council where we would then have another public hearing at the full council to discuss the zoning change. And that's, you know, without giving you all the, the dates of the timeline, that's the short and simple way of how that would work. Now, and I, I don't necessarily, I don't believe, and Jeff, I don't know if you've found anything out on this necessarily, like if we feel like this doesn't, isn't a, a change that we would recommend, then we don't necessarily have to bring it to the planning board. We can just not recommend it to them. And I, so I, I think that's the, the other way it could go. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, JP. I hope it does. No, I, I think that answers and lays out, lays out the process. Uh, I wanted to thank Mr. Cernak for his family business being here. I, uh, in fact, uh, had uh, coached a little, in full disclosure, coached a, little, a farm league team, uh, pre-Little League, uh, for Cernak, Cernak Buick, uh, way back when, in many, uh, many, many years ago. So uh, you've been very supportive of, of the community, the family has, and uh, I know family members have traded and bought cars and been uh, very pleased with uh, everything you've done. That being said, I would appreciate, because I've heard from many, many, many constituents in uh, Precinct 1, that they're very uncomfortable with this uh, change. And I know that they want to fully understand it and to be very clear th about their interests in, in this. And one of the, one of the things that uh, I, I think would be very important is I've heard that the property uh, that is being requested to be changed is surrounded by, uh, and I believe Mr. Cernak used the word surround twice tonight. And I, I wanted to point out that to surround means to completely encompass something and encircle it. And this property is bordered by residential on two sides and by commercial to the north and to the east. So. I, I just wanted to be clear about that as we present the process. Uh, so I would appreciate that. And, and I know you see it as a little tweak <laughs> and there are people here who I, I think you, you would find that uh, felt otherwise. But that being said, we look forward to the, to, to, to the process and I thank you. Okay, and I, I mean, a lot of people did come tonight. So I'm, I'm really would love for you to, you know, raise your hand and um, have your voice heard. Um, if you made the effort to come out, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, there will be more opportunities, um, but you know I think it's important for us as a committee to hear people's perspectives. Um, and so if you feel so inclined, just go down to reactions and, and raise your hand. Okay, uh, Brendan. Looks like you're muted, Brendan. I don't, I don't know if you're talking to us or. How about now? Yeah, now we got you. All right, thank you very much. Yes, um, my name is Brendan Leith. I live at 89 Northampton Street, uh, right across the street uh, from, from the parcels in question. And, um, you know, I, I, I just wanted to reiterate what, what JP said. I, I, I share those that general unease about, about changing the zoning, you know, like we, we are pretty understanding neighbors. We, you know, like if something is moving in to take Tasty Top's place, uh, we understand. And, you know, like if it's in what that zone is intended for, we're, we're, we're okay with it. But I think if, uh, you know, like it, it, it does, it does create a slippery slope situation. And I think we, uh, 
you know, we want to find out more. And, and in general, like I'm already concerned about the traffic in, in, on the street. Um, pulling out is already very difficult, especially turning left and uh, with Starbucks That's there awesome. or something similar, you know, we constantly see accidents in front of our house. And uh, I just, I just, I'm just wary about, about uh, changing this. And, and, and I do think that that's an excellent point that it is surrounded on two sides by residential and it has a feel of a resident residential neighborhood um, on that, on that area. And that that's all I have to say for now. Thanks, Brendan. Anybody else? Uh, Councilor Zarek. Just an interest of disclosure, um, uh, Chairperson um, Derby, uh, as with Councillor Kwasinski, who spoke, I did. I've received communications about this item as well. Um, uh, unfortunately, all of them in in opposition. But and I did forward that along to the uh, members of the um, ordinance committee as well as uh, the planner. So um, I think people should feel free to reach out uh, in support or in opposition. It's important to be engaged in these processes. But I just. Um, I, I think a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parcels on Groveland and then two nearby on Northampton Street had, had reached out and that was forwarded to the, um, the property committee, uh, the uh, ordinance committee, sorry. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. You know, I think it is, it is important, especially as, you know, people attend meetings and they, they start to see exactly what, you know, is being proposed as well, because, you know, a lot of people might not know exactly what's happening. So as we gain more information, we gain better perspective. So I think that's important as well. So keep reaching out. And I see uh, Deborah August hands up. Yes. Hi, uh, hi. Deborah August. I live at 21 Grove Land Street. Um, I wanted to comment on the Mountain View Street, the map. It is, when you get to the point, it is a paper road. There are parcels on the map, but when you see it, it's all woods from behind uh, the house right next to Seven Grove Land all the way down past my house behind four neighbors. It's all woods, woodland, a wildlife habitat. Uh, there may be parcels, but there is no buildings. Uh, so when you come and you look, you'll you'll see it's just woods. And from what I have been told, that area is the largest undeveloped area left in East Hampton. So that's just a side note. I know you're not going there, but that's part of this. Um, I would like to say, too, that along with Danielle, I'm a little confused because after the last meeting that I was there also, we assumed that was what was going to happen is if it changed from residential at Seven Grove Land to highway business, from what Mr. Cernak had said, that there could have been a Wendy's or a Starbucks or something similar. Based on that, um, the idea of having something like that would completely disrupt the entire neighborhood. We have a very quiet private setting. Uh, we have no sidewalks, maybe two or three street lamps. It's private, it's quiet. We walk across the street to talk each other, talk to each other. The, the neighbors walk up and down the street with their strollers, their children, their pets. If something you know, for example, to go in there was a Wendy's or something like that. The traffic would be a problem. Um, any sort of uh, dumpsters, trash, litter, uh, any kind of food business would bring in and attract even more wildlife than we already have, which could then cause a nuisance problem. Um, it's just that it would, it would disrupt the look the characteristics, everything we have, because you're now going down into the street rather than at the top of the street, which as we all know is highway business and however you do that is fine. But if you start going down into Seven Grove land, you're now going right into the middle of our 
the beginning of our neighborhood. And so I'm just asking, you know, uh, I feel for Mr. Cernak, I understand what it's like to have parcels that you'd have to pay property taxes on that are useless at the moment. But at the same time, you have to understand the surrounding neighbors and what they'll be left with if this is changed over into a highway business. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, Keith, I see your hand up. Yeah, I can respond to that. Thank you, Deborah, for that perspective. I can respond to that um, in some ways. Um, Cernak Buick had um, a commercial operation going on those properties where we talked about Starbucks, Wendy's for over 50 years, um, which consisted of, you know, bright lights in a, in a car lot um, and, you know, all that entailed with an automobile business. So that has been used commercially for 50 years. And I don't think anyone ever felt it was detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, I can see your concerns about 7 Groveland Street being a larger piece of all that. Um, I don't know if that's needed in my, in my perspective to, to um, do the whole 7 Groveland highway business, maybe just you know, some squares, some lot lines out. Um, but that commercial goes all the way down to um, the back of 7 Groveland, right up to the house as it is now. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Just a point of order. I, I'm worried that we're straying too much into a dialogue between members of the public. And we, I think that this time should be reserved for comments, not for a Q&A between the petitioner and the public. That's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think that this is germane to the conversation. So I, you know, I, I'm, that's why I'm allowing it to proceed. Um, but Councillor Peak. Yeah. So I just, uh, the, uh, Mr. Cernak just said this for the second time, and and you know I I'm hearing what everyone's saying here, and uh, I I know we 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 do want to do a um, a site visit, but it's sounding to me like there might be an option that would be acceptable to at least some people, where potentially some square footage from the back of Seven Groveland becomes part of the adjacent commercial parcel. But that the what remains the majority of the seven Groveland parcel remains a residentially zoned parcel, and that the thing is that to me that sounds like something that Mr. Cernak would agree would be okay with. That sounds like the the pri primary concern. I mean, I, I'll in disclosure, I did drive by, past the area the other night just to get a sense of what we're going. At. I that that does seem to deal with the idea of this commercial space reaching fat, rather far down and otherwise residential street and um i guess my question i'm not I, I i don't think we're ready to start figuring that out but i was just hoping that i could ask jeff and also uh you mr chairman uh what the procedure would be if a property if an, if an owner of two parcels wanted to move some square footage from one parcel to another when they're on the border between two differently zoned areas, whether that would require a different sort of action of the council or, or what that would actually be, because it sounds like that could potentially happen. And a lot of, I mean, I, I don't know if that would make everybody happy, but it sounds like the, you know, that would potentially alleviate at least some of those concerns and leave that parcel residential while also potentially allowing for uh, something to be for those other parcels to be usable because that is that something that like it, can that I, I guess this is a question for Jeff is like can that even be done and if so like what does that require from the council just so that when we go and do our site visit we are like are considering what our options actually are great question uh, planner bag I think on the surface of it um I think a, a portion of a property could be rezoned, and I think it would it would think it would follow all the same process that we're kind of engaged in now. So I think the process could could allow that without you know much deviation from a normal process. I think the the thing that I would um, recommend, and I you know I, I want to be careful because you know my my job is uh, sometimes it's amorphous and it's confusing to explain this to people, but you know I'm not. 
I am not the I'm not the Cernax, you know, agent or, you know, I'm not representing Keith. So I think what would have to happen is um, I would recommend that they want to um, work with a surveyor to, to draw out the property because what, what, what would concern me is that um, if you rezone like the back, the backyard or something, my expectation right now would be that you'd have to maintain a conforming residential lot. You know, so you would have a house and then you'd have whatever the setback is for the residential zone would have to be maintained. Then maybe you could have the highway business kind of wrap around. Um, and I don't really, you know, the, the way that house is situated is pretty far back. So let's guess that the step back is, you know, 30 feet, 30 feet. Of, of rear, a rear yard. You know, I, I would think that you can't rezone right up to the house. You can't make the house lot non-conforming. So I, there's a little bit of puzzle pieces, but it's, it's something where, you know, I can do back of the napkin sketch, but I'm, I'm a little weary usually of kind of taking someone else's property and, uh, you know, taking on that responsibility. It, it is possible process wise, but I, I do have some questions about whether the property can keep the required setbacks for the residential. I mean, it's worth something exploring. Maybe Mr. Yeah. Sucker can kind of, you know, vet that with some folks, you know, um, and, and see if that's viable or if, you know, that would be a compromise for sure. But I don't see entirely the merits of just zoning some square footage. I don't know if it's a numbers game. And I think, you know, I think the owner would need to kind of do some some investigating to make sure at, before we advance something that is really serves everyone's purpose. Can Sorry, I just that, cut into just ahead, sure Go ahead, we're on the same page. I guess what I was thinking, like, if you know, if you like, could one could some could some portion of the land be transferred from one parcel to another parcel? If that were it, so long as all the setbacks were respected if that meant that the parcel that the land was transferred to then had the, the frontage required to uh, do <laughs> what needs to be done. I, I, I mean, like I, that just what, what Mr. Cernak said is that that was something that could potentially solve the problem. So I just want to like, I was just sort of asking about what, and it's, you're right that, okay, that's helpful that, that, uh, making sure that the setbacks would work is an important thing. And we probably need to get a surveyor involved. So yeah, uh, yeah and the yeah. surveyor would do the, they would do the lot line transfers as well. Okay. So it, it, you know, in a lot of these cases, it comes down to a numbers game because you have to have a certain amount of frontage and a certain amount of area. And that's, that's what a surveyor would do via the a &R process. So the approval not required is how you move property lines. Um, but, you know, that's outside of what I would normally be doing but I think it maybe something would be a step for um, the owner to, to kind of have someone put some pencil to paper and, and find out what the configuration is that maybe would be the, the compromise. Okay. Uh, so Councilor Zara, since you're on the committee, I'm going to, I'll take you first and then I'll take Councilor Kwasinski. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I would certainly defer to my, but so just the question there is from a matter of process, Mr. Chairman would be, um, cause I, I, I heard Mr. Cernak say that as well. Would that have to, that would have to be a whole entirely different proposal, correct? We wouldn't be able to look at that with, from within the confines of the current agenda item. It would have to be dismissed and then another proposal would have to be brought forward or am I incorrect? Uh, just uh, my initial thought to that is this, since we're looking at rezoning that particular parcel, w there's no specific, um, you know, caveat saying whether we rezone the entire parcel or a portion of the parcel, I think it would be fine within the confines of what we have in front of us. Okay. That's just my initial thought. No, it makes um, sense. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. And, and Jeff, do you want to weigh in on that or? Okay. I think it, I think it makes sense. Okay. Uh, Councilor Kwasinski. Oh, you're muted again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There you go. Uh, while we have planner bag here, I, I wonder if he has the zoning uh, information, the zoning booklet that can be called up. What, what to know what the underlying zoning on that parcel is? Well, to know, to know what, what, what uses uh, differentiate the residential from the, the uh, highway business. So what uses could be put for highway business? I think that would be helpful for everyone to understand that. Um, I can certainly Actually, do it. I mean, read them if you couldn't pull them up, but if you could pull them up and, and let us know, that would be probably. A yeah. 
I can try that. I mean, if, if Councillor Derby wants me to do that, I think I would summarize it as that, just to, to summarize that the highway business is the most allowing district. So it's going to allow the most the most things. I, I'm happy to pull it up if, um, if the chairperson I mean, would like to. I mean, I, th I think like to me, it seems really obvious the difference between a residential zone and a, and a highway business zone. A highway business I mean, zone. I'm is thinking of things like like you know auto auto uh, repair. Uh, that would be allowed. Yeah, gas, gas stations. <laughs> that would be allowed. Like pretty much everything is allowed, pretty, pretty except much. for uh, cannabis cultivation. <laughs> so anything um, that uh, jumps out that maybe we don't have in our highway business currently, planter bag. Like you can't do heavy industrial in highway business, so that's something. Yeah, I'm pretty close to getting it. Um, if if you want, I, my computer. I'm having some um, connectivity issues tonight. <laughs> I mean, the maybe, maybe highway maybe business. We do that another time if if it's difficult tonight. We, I think that would be fine. Forward. Yeah, Tom, did you have something you wanted to add? Just that the you know the zoning is online, but. I think, you know, in terms of the sorts of uses that are allowed, it's pretty, most of them I think are on, I, like, I don't think you have to go digging too far down the zoning to see, you know, the sorts of things that potentially some people might be a little bit concerned about having a certain amount of depth down a residential street. So I think we're all on the same page there yep. uh, without having to play through that too much. But, um, you know, I, I just think, we, I mean, it sounds like we have a couple options before us, but I, I'm not sure how much I actually have remaining to say about this until we actually can look at what the logistics are and maybe actually take a view of the property. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it for me. Agreed. And and uh, uh, Mr. Cernak, I, I think that you know maybe um, you know a couple of these things uh, might be things that fall into your court. Um, if you wanted to have a surveyor look at that, it sounds like that's a viable thing to at least explore. I know that as far as us in the committee, we, we want to go and take a look at the property and see standing on the ground because I drive by it all the time. So I see it and I know it, but it's different story when you walk the property. And, and that's, I think, a really important piece of our due diligence is to, you know, put our feet on the ground on the property and look at what the neighbors are going to be seeing. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that that's our next step is to do a site visit. Now, just to be aware in full disclosure, our site visit is going to be a advertised public meeting. Um, it's not going to be recorded, but we are going to post it and we are going to the, the three committee meeting members will be there discussing this. I imagine planner bag will be there. I don't know if Mr. Cernak is going to send anybody, um, you know, with them. So anybody that wants to come on the walkthrough is welcome to, um, because it is a public meeting. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and so and I, I have, oh, go yeah, ahead. go ahead, Mr. Cerner. Uh, no, I, I, I welcome that. And I think um, if you walk the property, you get a better perspective and of what works, what does, and, and, and what I'm referring to, um, which could be very non-intrusive um, and, and could resolve a lot of, um, a lot of um, issues. And um, so I appreciate that you would do that. And I could get a representative to go with you um, just because I'm here. All right. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, Councilor Zaret. Just in the interest of this discussion, that proposal, Mr. Chairman, I mean, would Mr. Cernak be interested in entertaining what, uh, as you mentioned, a survey and, and what uh, taking a small piece from um, behind that uh, parcel would look like? Oh, is that a question to me? Um, is that okay? Is it yeah, yeah, that's fine. Question? yeah, of course. Yeah, yes, it is, Mr. Cernak. Okay, uh, so the, the parcel C that if you look at the parcel map that's behind the house, it's actually 23,000 square feet. So I believe any kind of commercial par uh, parcel needs to be, if you correct me if I'm wrong, 25,000 square feet. So if you look at this, we've got this parcel C, it's 22,000 square feet, the whole piece. And then if it goes along the old zone lines, that basically corrects the issue. Interesting. 
Uh, yeah, that is, yeah, a, really, you know, I think that that is going to be, I mean, in order to, to really get a, a feel for the, the actual dimensions, that's definitely going to have to be surveyed, but like that old approximate where it says approximate zone line that, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily even have to go at a diagonal like that. If you just cut across the back, then no. you, if you maintain the 30 foot setback and then on the side, this is R15, it would be a 15 foot setback, I believe. Um, you know, so, and I think what that would do is it would remain the integrity of Groveland and it would, um, you know, allow that, that to stay a residential parcel. So that could alleviate some people's, you know. And I would, I would be absolutely fine with that. And I also understand that highway business um, uses conform, uh, parcels A, D, and C um, would conform to highway business uses. So that would be fine. That would be fine with me. And I'm really not looking to, for a mega development. I don't think that's what my father ever wanted. It's not what I want for the town. So um, I just want to lay, uh, allay anyone's fears that I am not looking for some huge development to go into the two, all the two and a half acres and, and rezone the house to do that. I'm just not. Um, it, I would like to be able to put, if, if it meant if it was worthwhile to put affordable housing on parcel C, D, A, or at least have that option for more housing, because I know it's valuable for the town if everyone in the town feels that's what they want. So I want, that's a great option too. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I would love to open this up to anybody else that had any uh, thoughts. It looks like JP raised his hand. If, does anybody else from the, from the public want to um, speak out on this or, or throw their two cents in? Just go ahead and go down to reactions and raise your hand. JP, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess what I would just add to what Councillor Zarrett had said and Councillor Peak, if, if it's possible to, to, to draw up a plan with the lines uh, that meet your requirements to utilize commercially the parcels that you have by adding, I believe you said approximately 3,000 square feet, uh, 2,000 square feet rather, uh, then that would make sense. And then I think we could see it or the, 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 the committee could see it when there's the site visit. I don't know how quickly something like that can be done, but generally surveyors are pretty, especially if it just means dropping a line on a plan and maybe a, a marker or two on the field. But that was my suggestion to be helpful. Yeah, I'll to just have I would just have to sell one of my children to pay for the survey. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh, uh oh, don't disagree there. <laughs> yeah. So, but yes, um, that would be fine, and and I would be amenable to having someone survey and find out what exactly that square footage would look like, and as we looked at the zoning of uh, that zone, uh, the old zoning line, um, that would be that would be fine. Okay. And so what I, I think, unless there's anybody from the public that wanted to make a comment, um, I, you know, I, I think it probably makes sense for us to go out and take a look at this before it snows. Um, but the way my schedule is set up now, it's going to have to be a Saturday. So I'm hoping that the other committee members aren't going to be too upset by that. Um, That's fine. Okay. I'm locked down because I had a positive test in my household until Friday, but I could do yeah this weekend or next weekend or something. Well, I have the eleventh. I have a, a a previous walk that I could probably move around a little bit. Um, so you know, I, I, I the Saturday the eleventh could be a really good date for me. Yeah, let's uh, do it. That's fine. And that's, yeah, and so what I'll do is I'm gonna um, uh, let's. You want to come up with a time? You guys want to do like ten or or earlier? Doesn't matter. I have enough. I have an appointment first thing in the morning that day, so ten would probably work for me. All right. So Tom, is can ten? We, gonna, is that maybe for more little after lunchtime? Or I mean, <laughs> <laughs> is there a metal show that weekend? Come on. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, no, yeah, I mean so, it's fine. I'm joking. I'll, I can do whatever. Okay. Okay. Ten, ten right, is so fine. I'll, I'll, I'll what I'll do is I'll uh, alert um, the president and the clerk that we're gonna do a site. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Oh man, I, I, you put a lot of hours in and I really, I, I really appreciate that. And I know that Saturday is probably tough family time and I'm sorry. Do you think it's something you could squeeze in or? I was, I was asking my wife, <laughs> I was asking my wife, but uh, what time did you guys land on? Like 10, if, but we can, we can move. I mean, we can be flexible. 
she says it's fine so i'm good <laughs> okay all right good all right then, well the boss says it's okay so we're okay all right so I'll, I'll i'll check in i'll get that advertised for us so it's a legit public meeting and that way we can all discuss this together if anybody that's on the call um is interested in coming and just walking the property with us um you know it's it's not going to be super exciting but we're just going to go take a look and and see what this all entails so um but uh yeah so great so we're gonna do uh saturday december 11th at 10 a.m so let me just put that in my calendar or you're going to be on some sort of communication while you're doing it that you want me available for as well uh, um, whether it's a whatsapp or a facetime if you had questions on the spot uh, that's a good, that's a, I think what we'll probably do is we'll come up with a list of questions. And if, um, and if we need to get things answered, we'll just, we'll just email that list or, um, address it at our next meeting. I don't, I don't think we need to necessarily do a, uh, you know, a live, um, Q and a at that point, if that's all right, let me just, uh, see a couple of hands, but I got to put this in at 10 o'clock. So I don't miss it. I want to show up for this. Okay. Uh, Danielle, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just have a logistics question um, regarding the recordings. Um, I, I'm just wondering when the November 16th meeting will be available for the public to see, because I know there are a lot of people who haven't seen it that would like to see it on East yep. Camp Media. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, we we did get a uh, an email from the president saying that maybe Zoom was having some issues uh, encoding the videos, so they're working on it. Um, I know that it was recording and I'm sure you do too, because you had to hit the little got it thing. I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, like right now we're recording and um, so I don't know exactly the answer to that. Cause that's kind of out of our purview, but I do know that people are aware of it and they're working on it. And how long do the videos usually take to post? I mean, usually they, they go pretty quick. I think what they're having the problem with is, um, you know, finding the, the recording in the zoom system. So as far as what I can um, tell from the message that I got today. So, um, but I do know that they're working on it. Okay, thank yep. you. Councilor Zarek. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I was just gonna put out there, similar to what Mr. Cernak was saying, I'd be, I'd be interested, I know we have short on time, but um, if there was some way to make this a virtually interactive experience on the 11th, I'd, you know, whether it be somehow live streaming uh, the walkthrough or even a, a Zoom link with someone holding a tablet that uh, can have interaction. I'd, I'd be interested in looking into that at least. Okay. I mean, the reason why I, I was, that wasn't, I, I wanted to focus on what we were doing and not focus on, you know, technical things. Uh -huh. You know, so if it was like one of us being responsible for that, like I wouldn't want that because I want us to be present and focused. Um, you know, so that's, that's my, that's, I'm not against it, but I don't, I don't think any of us should be doing it because I feel like we should be paying attention to the, the task at hand and, and really doing our best to do our due diligence in that situation. So um, would you be open to recording it in some way and then uploading that? Yeah. Okay. I have no problem. You can wear my GoPro. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Any other, any other thoughts on this issue before we move on to uh, our next agenda item, which I'm thinking maybe we just have like a real quick discussion about because it's, I haven't eaten yet and I'm it's getting late. It's almost my bedtime. So uh, any other thoughts on this particular issue? Okay, great. Well, th I appreciate everybody coming. It's important to come out and to and to be involved in these things. And, and I hope that, uh, you know, we can hear everybody's input and, and find a solution that's amenable um, to all the parties. So thank you. Um, all right. So next item. Thank on you our very agenda. much. Yeah, thanks, Keith. You appreciate it. Um, the next item is one that I think uh, we have a few things that we do need to discuss. Um, but, you know, one of the things we haven't really gotten around to discussing is the vacant storefront ordinance, which I think is on my list now that we have 40R in our uh, joint planning uh, meeting. Um, I feel like this one is one that I would love to discuss now that we can. Uh, now, <clears throat> Councilor Zarek, I, I, I do know that the, um, the Juneteenth thing has is, is been sitting there. And so, you know, if you want, I'm, I'm willing to, if you want, I'm, I'm saying like, 
maybe a half hour, um, I'd be willing to to stay on and, and try to dig into that um, if you want to do that. Otherwise, uh, I'm, I, I think it would be interesting to start talking about the storefront. It's up to you. It's really up to you because Juneteenth has been sitting there. Yeah, we just well, got I mean, we, we have till June 19th of uh, 2022. To, uh, no, I mean, uh, let's we'll we'll figure something out. I, I agree that, okay. you know, unfortunately, we have I feel we have items that have probably more precedent um, and weight. I think we just have to we probably should nail down a, 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 a meeting, Mr. Chairman, where we are, have agreed. We agree to talk to about it, too. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, okay. so I, I, and I, you know, it's, it's not a complicated, um, piece no, of material. And, but and that's what I was saying. Like it, it might be something, if we just pulled it up, it might be something that we could, you know, just go through and say, Hey, um, you know, we, we like this part. We like this part. Maybe we leave this part out. And I mean, do you want me to make you, do you want to just take a look at it? Oh, counselor peak. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. That we at our so we've been starting at seven, and I'm pretty sure the reason that we've been starting at seven is to uh, accommodate the participation from uh, Jeff. Yeah, it might yeah. right. So why don't we at our next meeting start at six, <laughs> and then do the the Juneteenth thing, and then turn to this because I feel like we run into this issue every time where we start at seven and handle the whatever the exact pressing thing is, and then we're like tired and hungry by the time yeah. it, it turns. So why don't we, why don't we at our next meeting, why don't we start at six and do Juneteenth first? Do Juneteenth and then we'll work, go on to the vacant storefront. I think that, I mean, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, and so we do want to take a look at, for our next meeting right now. Yeah. I'm, I mean, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we're meeting on the 11th um, for the walkthrough. So and on then, the 14th. The 14th, we have a public hearing with the planning board. That's right. Um, which is pushing us kind of further. I mean, we could do the 21st. Let me just check really quick here. I have a couple other things that are happening in my world. Um, the 21st. 21st actually works for me. You guys want to share? with me. Okay. Owen, oh, how's that look for you? Yes? Okay. All right, let's do um, 21st at six. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust my schedule a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just, uh, yeah, so. Um, uh, all right, ordinance, and that's gonna be at six. All right, so I have our next meeting is going to be the 11th walkthrough, meeting after that's gonna be the 14th joint public hearing with the planning board. 21st is going to be uh, a regular meeting that starts at six. And that way, we can we could probably wrap up tonight and i could eat something and start getting into a normal state of mind here because i literally walked in the door and started this meeting so <laughs> counselors there and i'm seeing you want to say something here yeah you got to find that mute button sorry it is. in between a few things one thing <laughs> i just wanted to bring up really quickly and i don't know if you want to wait till we actually get into this but um uh, as you recall the ordinance review items initially were separated by that committee into public safety and ordinance items. And I could just speak for myself that I reviewed them. And I, I feel that from my perspective, I don't have a problem with, with, with moving the public safety items off of our agenda to public safety. Um, but I, I just wanted to put that out there just from a, a, a housekeeping perspective. But I also understand that we haven't address that agenda item and so right. if you want to wait till we get into that i'm okay with that too well so just to um since i'm on public safety <laughs> um so those items already have been moved into public safety they're on our agenda so we basically can when we dive into that we can just ignore those ones because they're already in public safety does that make sense oh it does i was yeah. I mean, I was hoping that public safety would do the same and, and move the ordinance items to ordinance and just take them both off the agenda. I just, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean. So when we, when we pick it up, we'll just take the ones that are specific to us and uh, public safety has the, the public safety related ones. Because it was just the way it was moved was generic and but they kept them all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think that we actually, I don't think we have to take a vote or anything. I think I think we should be um procedurally we should be pretty good okay yep 
Great. Um, all right. Do, would you guys mind if we if we wrap it up and just pick this up at our next meeting? It's fine with or, me. Okay. Just yeah. What do you think, Owen? Oh uh, yeah, I'm fine. I mean, I, I have a bunch of. I I mean, just on on its merits, I, I just wanted to say I, I like the concept of the vacant storefront ordinance. I have some questions, but yeah. they don't. We can we can wait until um until uh, we discuss that more. That's great. And and um yeah, and I I kind of was hoping to talk about it tonight, but. You know, it's going to be a meaty discussion and there's a lot of moving parts in that. Um, and so, you know, I think what we can do for the next when we actually dig into it, um, you know, we'll have the PowerPoint. We can look at some of the things that the other communities that have implemented this and then start like discussing. How, how are these for East Hampton, you know, because if you look around East Hampton, this is something that I would say is pretty needed. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Tom, any parting thoughts here? Uh, this has been productive, I think. Great. Awesome. Well, I appreciate everybody's time. And those of you that stuck around, thanks for hanging with us. Um, and we will be meeting again at our site visit at December 11th at 10 a.m. We are, will have a joint uh, meeting with the planning board on December 14th at 6 p.m. Uh, and then our next meeting will be the 21st at 6 p.m. that will be virtual. So, uh, I am happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. So, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> just, but, yeah, go ahead. All right. Just, just for a point of clarification. Second, yeah. Well, just for the public, since we discussed this so much tonight, the, the, the joint public hearing with the planning board is about the 40R. So people who were interested in that topic, just, just to let them know that, that uh, that's what we'll be talking about. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Right. Yep. And that's the zoning, 40R zoning for the existing highway business district. For existing highway business, correct. Okay. All right. So now I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. So we have a motion in a second. Councilor Peak. Aye. Councilor Zaret. Yes. And I vote yes too. Thanks everybody for coming. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Bye, take bro. care.